Well, we're definitely going to have some reactions to oh, all of this shit. with you guys. Um, I, I can see that um, we're going to have to get him a lollipop or something because he is definitely pissed off. But I'm not going to say that he's got to be an all-pro defensive line. Boy, was I wrong. Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes, of course, here with my buddy, Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report without you guys, as well as you ladies. You know that this literally does not work. So we are here in day number two of the NFL offseason, but the offseason really doesn't exist because, yes, the season is over. But here's the thing. This is crazy. I want to read to you the list of dates because today is the 13th of February, 13th of February. And here it is, the 13th of February, one week from today is beginning of franchise tagging of players. Let me say that again. One week from today, February 20th, is the beginning of signing free agents, excuse me, uh, designating uh, franchise tag. February 27th through March 27th, two weeks from today, begins the combine. Yeah, two weeks from today. March 5th is the deadline to offer the franchise tag. Now, I don't see the Cowboys having to offer franchise tag. I, I don't see them using the tags this year for the first time in forever. Um, March 11th to 13th is legal tampering. You can start negotiating with free agents and things uh, come March 13th. It is the beginning of the league year, 4 p.m. That's only four weeks from today. So you start looking at that, and all of a sudden you realize there's not much time, and thank goodness that we finally at least got um, Mike Zimmer hired and in place because we got to get a coaching staff together and start developing a philosophy and figuring out which one of the players that we have that we want to bring back and which ones we want to let go and who we want to bring in. Because if we are technically really going all in, which I think is not the case, um, then we've got some problems. But I want to answer something here because, oh my Lord, you know, I, I sit here. I, I love being here. I'll, I'll be 100% real. YouTube and social media and talking and all that is incredible. I don't pretend to be an NFL insider or ESPN or anything else. I'm a guy who loves the Dallas Cowboys. And I love talking about the Dallas Cowboys. I love sitting here and making believe that, you know, I have some knowledge and some thoughts and ideas that may be conceivable doesn't mean that everybody's going to agree with me. And so I remember just on Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday with David Wiley, shout out to David Wiley, uh, who will be going with us on the trip to the draft. Um, we were talking about what we can do. And I said four steps that can fix the Cowboys' problems. And I was doing a hypothetical. And I, I don't foresee the Cowboys doing all of these or maybe even any of these things. But I said, you know, we had a problem with the running game. So what if you end up getting somebody like Derrick Henry or Josh Jacobs, okay? You know, those are moves that are going to cost you money. Um, and, and that's what they're going to cost you. And try to say, let's get a legitimate running game going like other teams. I said, then, you know, you could get Cray Cray and you could go ahead and make a trade and try and trade for Stefan Diggs if he is out there. And for me, second round picks, you know what? I'll give you my next five second round picks because we suck at them, you know, for a trade because we don't get anything out of our second round picks except for Diggs and D-Law. That's it. That's the list of what we've done in the second round. It has not been good. And then the next thing I said, get yourself a real linebacker. And I said, let's say, for example, instead of going the older route with Bobby Wagner, which you could do pretty relatively cheap in comparison, who may still have some tread on the tires. Not a lot. You know, you could take probably the, the, the penny and you might get Lincoln's head in there. You, you, you might get Lincoln's head, but I don't know about much more than that. I said, what happens if you decided to go and say, I'm going to go ahead and get Patrick Queen? 
And I said, you go through, you do these by getting Dak Prescott's contract, you know, extended to get some cash. You end up doing CD lambs, you know, and the reason I say these things is the Cowboys aren't getting rid of Dak Prescott. As much as you want to bitch and moan about it, they're not going to because Dak Prescott is good enough to constantly keep the Cowboys in the conversation of playoffs and Super Bowl. And that's the main thing Dallas wants. If they get rid of Dak Prescott and start all over, then you're going to have some down years, and Jerry don't want that down years. He wants that playoff revenue. He wants that number one jersey sale and things. So I'm trying to come up with ideas and solutions to fix what we have. You can't always, and this is the problem with this generation, because, you know, we get, we get a cell phone. We get a cell phone. And, you know, a year later, we're ready to get another one. You know, things aren't built to last anymore. You know, everything you buy is disposable. You buy a washing machine, it's going to last for a couple of years. It's going to break down. The repair guy's going to come through here and say, it's too expensive to fix. You just, it'd be cheaper to buy a new one. And that mentality has focused into you guys where it's just constantly, we just got to throw it away and start over. It doesn't work that way. You need an old washing machine. And this is, I, we'll see how it works out with Mike Zimmer. But let me give you a little bit of knowledge on Mike Zimmer, okay? Um, actually, before I give you a little bit on Mike Zimmer, most of you guys are probably about how Emmett Smith is. And I want to play this because this is relative to Mike Zimmer. This was a couple of days ago at the Super Bowl. But listen to Emmett Smith talking about the Cowboys, and being done with them. What I have experienced over the last year with the Cowboys. It's been more than just the last year. I've never been at this place. Well, it's good seeing you again, man. Likewise, I mean, likewise. What is this, like three, four radio rows now? I've, I've been able to talk to you, which is awesome. Well, yeah. Yeah, it has been about three. It's yeah. probably been like three or four. Um, you know, we've been talking, but unfortunately, we're not talking about the Cowboys here. Um, uh, that seems like normal. Right. I mean, it's been 20 some years. So it's, there's nothing, to, well, outside of the how bad we are right now. So your know. frustration level is kind of with the fan base right now. I'm, I'm done. I mean, I, I'm over the moon past the word frustration. Oh. Yeah, I can't even begin. I mean, it's almost like. When I, when I think about what I've experienced over the last year with the Cowboys, I've never been at this place, at the place where I'm at right now. I mean, it is, it, it is, it is borderline embarrassing. Well, I know you yesterday made headlines on Radio Row because you alluded to not wanting Mike McCarthy back, but why do you think Jerry brought him back? I think Jerry brought him back to maintain continuity of a team that he's still that's still intact versus having to create this scenario of rebuilding because some people would take any move that the Cowboys make, whether it's with Mike McCarthy or with Dak Prescott as an opportunity to rebuild. Yes, and I don't think the team needs to go through a rebuilding process. I think we are we have the talent. We just okay. gotta do things a little bit differently and focus on things a little bit differently than what we've been doing. You just can't walk out there with just talent and expecting talent just to beat everybody. Very true. So that's why the game is played, made up in three parts, mind, body, and soul. So what are you going to tell, uh, or what have you been telling fans about uh, sticking with Dak Prescott as a quarterback moving forward? Or do you, you know, what do you think they should You know, do? I think with Dak Prescott, offensive coordinators can make a quarterback look real good, mm -hmm. but they can make him look real bad. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think you have a combination of both. Um, I don't know whether or not Dak development as a quarterback is is at at the level that I think it should be by now. I don't know if the trust level is there at the level that it should be. True. He did change coordinators now, so you come out of that's Mike McCarthy. That's not easy. That's not easy to do because now the quarterback and the coordinator has to be in sync, but the head coach is the coordinator. So is the head coach calling the play well, because he's the head coach or is he calling it because he's the offensive coordinator? Yeah. And it may not be as simple as everybody think it is. Well, how do you feel about Mike Zimmer that high? Are you a little excited about that? Zimmer, Zimmer's coming home? Yes, I, sir. I cannot wait to give him a big hug. 
See, now we got you excited about something. No, I mean, because <laughs> I think we need some of that that old school tradition right. brought back into right. the mix. Mm -hmm. And uh, is do? Zimmer that guy? He got great talent. I mean, they can, trust me, Zimmer going to figure out what to do with that defense. And he's going to make that thing right. And if McCarthy and Zimmer can jail as head coach to head coach or head coach to defensive coordinator, we'll be fine. All right, there you go. Okay. He, we've got the Emma Smith seal of approval for Mike Zimmer. Now, another person who worked with him directly for nine years, nine years of his career, where it's a damn shame that he is not in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, he has literally been robbed, is Darren Woodson. Because Darren Woodson was with them from 1994 to 2003. And, um, all five of Darren Woodson's Pro Bowl appearances were under Mike Zimmer. And so you start thinking about this. Okay, uh, let me give you another. Let me give you some statistics here on what Mike Zimmer's defense was doing um, in his three stops as coordinator or head coach. Um, in Dallas from 2001, we were, of course, first. He wasn't a defensive coordinator then. Uh, 2003, we were third. Um, Cincinnati in 2009, he was fourth and, uh, 2013, he was third in Minnesota, 2016, third, um, in 2017, first 2018, fourth. So all 20 uh, of his 27 decent defenses in the 22 years, seven of them finished in the top 10 in rush defense. And all of a sudden, ding, 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 ding. That lets you know that that may be the perfect hire for us, a guy who can definitely stop the run. And here's the thing that with the Joneses, the Joneses, you know, when, you're, when you get old, you get nostalgic. You know, you opine for the past. And you kind of have revisionist history sometimes in some of the things that happen. You know, when you think about your the town you grew up in, Everything was great, man. You know, uh, the, you know, the old corner shop and things like that. Things change, and it's like you still keep thinking and you're stuck in the past. And that's the Joneses. And that, that may be the case here. We're holding on to Mike Zimmer, which was the last time the Cowboys were that great team in that dynasty. Bringing some of that back brings back a comfort level for the Joneses. But it also brings a coach who's going to be fiery. So more on what Darren Woodson said. You already heard Emma Smith saying, oh, I want to give that guy a hug. You know, I know what that guy is. He's no nonsense, and this is what they need. Darren Woodson, who was directly coached by him, of course, as opposed to Emma being on the offense. Um, so he was the defensive backs coach for five seasons before becoming the coordinator for four seasons with uh, with them. So he worked directly with Woodson. Woodson said he doesn't have any backup in him, Woodson said of Zimmer, uh, Zimmer who is replacing Dan Quinn in the Cowboys of its coordinator. He's going to set his feet, and he will fight you tooth and nails a lot like Bill Parcells. You're going to do it his way. He might not be your best friend. He isn't going to coddle you, and it's not going to be any kumbaya moments. That's not happening. He's going to test your mental. And that, I think, is very, very huge. Because I, I hate to say, or I've, no, I don't hate to say it. I, I'm, I'm admitting it. The Dallas Cowboys are Camp Cupcake. They're Camp Cupcake. It is the country club atmosphere. You got the greatest, you know, training facilities and this world class chef for the, you know, the, 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 the cafeteria and stuff. You got all of the media that's constantly there. You've got the star. You've got the, you know, AT&T Stadium. You are the rich kids that are spoiled ass mother humpers that don't understand having to suffer. And you get coddled. You get to, oh, I'm tired. We, we were tired, man. It's a long season. You check out. You say, we got to grow up. Well, that shit is ending, at least on the defensive side of the ball, with Mike Zimmer. That's the, he ain't going to do that. 
and and you guys saying that you are soft, he going to go even harder on you. And maybe just maybe that's the thing that they need. Now, I will say we have some talent. But when I look at the teams that are competing in the Super Bowl, they're playing on a different level with different players that are just flat out better. This change has to be a holistic, complete change from Jerry Jones on down. He's got to stop being this, we're building, you know, that's not the way you build for the future. Future my ass. 30 years. 30 years. You've been building for the future after you destroyed it. Future's now, bro. Future is now. So let's get this mother humper going and get it done. I'm Mark Holmes, and well, things will probably slow down a little bit for this week, but then you know it's going to be ramping up real quick. Um, Mike Zimmer should be hopefully naming some of his coaches, so we'll see if the coaching staff is going to basically stay intact and he just hires somebody else you know, to be the passing game coordinator or if he elevates maybe Al Harris and then we bring somebody else to be the D-back coach. Don't know. But we, of course, will be waiting and anticipating those moves. I'm Mark Holmes, and as always, I appreciate y'all. Peace.